everybody, welcome to the spring edition of the Google Corner here at Metis. As you can see, we are back to our normal location. Uh, last month we were in Gondwana and we spoke about machine learning. This month we're going to be hitting out spring, uh, what a perfect time. And as you can see, I am dressed for spring gear in my winter gear. Uh, spring in Cape Town, let's call it that. So something I love about spring, it just gives us all an opportunity to kind of review where we're at and what needs maybe a bit of a, a fresh outlook. Um, if we look at right now, behind us, our Instagram wall is getting a bit of a spring clean itself. And yeah, we'll talk about a little bit more on how we can spring clean our marketing next. Alright, so where to start with your marketing? I think my number one tip is you've got to decide which part of your company needs the most attention. It's just like if you were spring cleaning at home, you would like to take a look at you know, what needs the most spring cleaning. If your garage is already in order and it's neat and it's clean, why would you spend the time there spring cleaning it? But maybe your wardrobe is something that really needs to uh, get rid of those sort of jeans from 1980 um, and you, that's where you're going to be end up spending your time spring cleaning. It's exactly the same with your business. You want to be taking a look at the different aspects and taking a look at what requires the most spring cleaning. And in this case, especially with your marketing. So what I would recommend is taking a look at all of your marketing assets, seeing what where you know a lot of dust has sort of settled, um, what is looking a little bit old school, and decide to spring clean that. You want to be putting your time, which is one of your most massive resources, into what is going to add the most value to your business. So yes, definitely starting with reviewing all your assets, and then you can decide from there which is the best route to go. So when we look at your options that you may have found in regards to what requires spring cleaning, it can really change from business to business. So I think what um, might be based is just common areas that we have come across after doing a digital gap analysis, which we spoke about I think two or three months back. Um, and there are certain areas that we've we kind of noted generally have the most sort of gaps and need the most sort of spring cleaning. Certain aspects that get forgotten, you know, at the end of the day, we remember our Instagram account, maybe we remember to post there, but maybe we forget about something such as our Google My Business account and the fact that we haven't updated the public holidays on there. So yeah, I'm just going to go through a quick list of about five things that we find our digital gap analysis, which is the most common. So one of the platforms that we generally find require the most attention for most new clients that are coming on board um, is that the data that they are making business decisions on is not necessarily good pure data. And that is because Google Analytics was maybe set up a couple of years ago. It could even be set up two months ago. And what has happened is just the platform itself has just changed so much since then. So one of the biggest places that we, we recommend you starting to look at is your Google Analytics and make sure it's been up to date with all the latest trends that are available. For example, just recently, cross-device reporting came into play, but it is a setting that you need to now update on your Google Analytics. Now, if it hasn't been done, you could be missing out on really, really precious data when it comes to um, you know, making very important marketing and even business decisions. So I always decided to start there, getting out all my analytics in place, um, making sure that all my different traffic sources are tracking correctly. In other words, if I'm sending out an email and making sure that it is coming through as a traffic source in my Google Analytics, because I need to know, is my email worth the time that I'm spending on it? So making sure, a bit of a checklist, you can find a lot of them online, or you can chat to us, but yeah, definitely running your Google Analytics through a checklist and making sure that everything is in place. The next place that we notice quite a big shortfall when we look at our clients' different marketing is the most underutilized platform at the moment is probably Google My Business. Um, it's sad because it's actually a free platform and it's something that doesn't really require a lot of attention and probably is one of the platforms that give our clients the most sort of traction. Just think about yourselves. If you're going online and you are specifying an area that you're looking for a particular type of service, maybe something as simple as restaurants near me, what is going to come up is the Google My Business uh, results. Now imagine if those came up and then you try to phone and the telephone number maybe has changed and the person hasn't updated their telephone number. This is a really good warm lead that they've now lost out on. Or another uh, scenario is that maybe um, it's saying that they're open 
you drive there, you get there, and the place is closed uh, because it's maybe a public holiday and they haven't updated their Google My Business to sell that. There is no worse customer experience, especially in the traffic uh, that we experience here. So making sure all of that information is up to date is of the utmost importance. So just some things that are on there is, as I said, your contact information, making sure that is up to date your business hours, making sure that is up to date. And the one thing that we notice a lot of the time that is missing is what are your hours for public holidays? Are you closed? Do you have special hours during the public holidays? So making sure all of that is uh, in place. From there, you can get more fancier, um, adding you know photos, videos, blog posts, um, which all do help with traffic and insights. Um, but that is not really the spring cleaning part of it. That's now, once the spring cleaning has been done and everything's in place, now you can start looking at, well, how do I level this up? Um, but yeah, definitely start with your Google My Business, make sure firstly that you have an account, um, that you've claimed it, nobody else owns it, um, and then finally making sure that all of the basic information is in place. So the next step I have is kind of a fairly obvious one, and I'm pretty sure this is one that a lot of people do look at, but I'm going to say it just in case. Um, one thing that we do sometimes find that goes missing is that people haven't actually looked at their own website for a long time. So what might have been applicable a year ago is not applicable anymore just within your own business. There could be new services that you're offering, there could be services that you're not offering anymore. Um, so definitely taking a look at making sure all that information up to date. Contact information, maybe you have an email address of an employee on there that doesn't even work for you anymore. So making sure all of that is also in place. And then just ensuring everything is up to date with the latest best practices. So for example, um, how mobile friendly is your website? So there's different degrees of mobile. People always say to me, oh, but my, my website is mobile responsive. It does not necessarily mean it's still following the best practices. So just taking a look at all of those, making sure everything is in line. Um, and then I would even say take it a little bit further, such as um, you know Google giving a lot of cred to if you have a SSL certificate in place, making sure your security is up to date. Um, all of this helps with your rankings, with your Google Ads. So yeah, just taking a look at the latest best practices and seeing if your current website is in line with that. And a lot of the time you find it's really quick and easy fixes as well. So definitely not something to be ignored. Um, another thing you might want to do is actually get somebody who does not know your website or does not know your business and get them to evaluate it. Get it kind of from a user, a user kind of perspective, um, as we might make assumptions on something when we see it ourselves, but somebody else maybe taking a look at it might see something different. So really, take a look at your website. So uh, tip number four um, is that you need to relook at your databases. Um, again, if you might have had a database that could be really, really old. Um, and it's just nice to, to go through it and you don't want to constantly be sending emails to uh, places that are maybe getting stock bounces on them. It's not really going to be helping your, your open rates um, on your email newsletter. As well as they could be, you know, just your CRM database within itself. So not even from your email newsletter. Maybe people's contact information has changed, um, their status within your business. So maybe they're still on your CRM as a prospect, but they've since then become a client whatever the case is, to run through that CRM system, to run through that email database, and just making sure that it's all clean, um, segmented where possible, so you can make sure the right person's getting the right information, and just up to date in general. Uh, from there, again, you can then decide how to level up and say, well, now that I have these segmented lists, what is gonna be my strategy? How am I gonna utilize that? Before you can start, you're gonna need a serious cleanup, and hence the screen cleaning. So um, my last tip today is around your social media. Um, I, I think to a large extent we notice that people's social media is pretty much intact, um, especially if it's something that is active. But definitely still something to take a look at. I think the most common thing I know is when going, doing a digital net gap analysis is how people LinkedIn profiles are incorrect. So for example, they might have staff members on that are connected to the LinkedIn profile that don't actually work for them uh, anymore or in my case I had a case of somebody who had never ever worked for me but had claimed that they had so taking a look at cleaning that up um, as well as looking at stock members that maybe are still linked to their old companies but they currently work for you you know it all helps with that sort of perception um, something that people do look at when they go check out your company who's working there um, and even 
if you want to be a little bit pedantic, is taking a look at all the job titles, making sure all of those job titles, you know, there's a consistency about it. Not people giving themselves like rockstar status names and things like that that might not fit into the brand image of your company. So making sure that everything has a nice consistent feel about it. Also again, social media changes all the time. One of the things that we notice is they love changing cover photos and profile pics and the dimensions and what is allowed and what is not allowed. So just make sure you kept up to date with the, with the latest trends and, and what is being utilized there. Otherwise things might not be displaying properly. So take a look at your social media, when last you post, how much engagement are you getting? Um, you know, if you only last posted three years ago, consider, well, are we going to be utilizing this platform? Because if somebody's going there, you're going to look, actually look like a dormant company. So just remember the perception that people get from all your platforms. Do not have it unless you're going to be using it. Um, and definitely make sure all of that information that you have is in place. Also, just from, try and remember all the social media platforms that you might have started five years ago and totally forgotten that you even have. Um, do you have an old Pinterest account? that you thought was going to be a you know, game changer for your business, but since then it hasn't been utilized. So go take a look at closing sound that you're not using anymore and make sure the ones that you are using are up to date with the latest information and the best practices. So everybody, that's all we have for you today from the Google Corner. Um, what we would like to wish you is a fantastic spring cleaning. Um, enjoy it, enjoy the light feeling that comes with it. And secondly, remember to take what you have and then build on top of that, level up, and see how you can add value, especially with 2019 just around the corner. Cheers, TCB over and out.